Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I have another uh, Marini CM test, this time on a 2015 Volvo Penta 270 uh, CV. This is a V8 engine. Uh, this was sent to me by David Thompson in Alabama. Uh, his concern is uh, it says that it was a lightning strike very close to where the boat was uh, stored. And um, after that, it the boat runs and cranks and everything is good. It puts several hours on it, but it has no data coming from the ECU. No tachometer signal, no combust data. As I said, lightning is struck close to the boat. I have to replace the fuel sending unit, a stereo, two battery chargers, Regal View touch screen. My boat, my boat uses CAN bus date to touch a screen and will display oil pressure, water temperature, RPM, all on the touch screen. So I am driving blind without it. Uh, thank you, David. I was actually able to reproduce your concerns. So let me put this note because that's all his contact information in there. I have the computer connected right now. As you can see, I got the five or reference in there. Uh, he was kind enough to send me a print copy of the manual of the wire diagram. So uh, this is the serial number or spec number 4086948 BA 270CB and the harness part number 2249655 everything I check and is good as you see I check all my connections and all powers and grounds and they match to what I have uh, this is a newer setup so it has catalog converters and auto sensors and so on uh, this is a drive-by-wire system, so it has a throttle connector and a TCP control arm that will um, allow the uh, boat to control the, the, the idle, let's say, right? We got everything in here, ignition relay, coils, injectors, um, the OVDM diagnostic connector. This is a CAN bus connector communication. So uh, I can, let me try to run the because again, this is going to be blindly driving the, the engine because I was not able to establish communication. So let me just raise the hertz on the signal to reproduce that it runs. So I'm just adding a little here. And yes, I can see that it runs, although right now it's not running because I have now that the tag connected but yep i can see that it runs and we can see that in there you see how it runs we got the injectors and it shuts off it shuts off not because there's anything wrong it's because i don't have the drive-by wire connected and since i cannot see the signals because all right so let me just turn this off i'm going to turn the computer off and we're going to see the main power relay and the fuel pump come on so we can see that main power fuel pump and it you know it does the prime, which is good. It runs, we can see in jack milliseconds and it shuts off because of the same reason. So the computer is good. I got five or reference, so no problems on that. When I try to connect to the computer, if I select I'm using Diacom and I have the CAN adapter 94029. This is Rinda. Check the connectors and everything is good. Uh, for this, I'm selecting Obo Penta EGC CAN and 4G CAN. That's just a connector that I need. This also has to turn 2015. I end up direct injection, but that's for a different computer. So when we have a 4G CAN, this is the way the computers look. And it can be a little bigger with more connectors. This is the same as the old style 4G uh, computers. Uh, and it tells you what connector you can use. So when I click on there, it's trying to detect the computer, no communication, so definitely no CAN bus signal. I have right now my oscilloscope connected to the same lines of the CAN bus, which in these computers are pin 15 and 13, CAN high and CAN low, and that's what I see. So definitely the CAN bus is not, it's not working, and this is his concern. So yes, I'm able, able to reproduce. I like I said again, I went over the diagrams and I can go into those uh, pins 13 and 14. Um, yes, see 13. Uh, it should be 14 and 15. Can one two? 
I have to really follow this. Give me just one second to double check that because I got 15, oh no, 14. So that is indeed 14 and 15. So if I go over to um, another manual that I have here, um, this is just to see all the connections. Uh, let me just see. So 13 and 14, 14 and 15, can one low and a high, and then 16 and 70, can low and can high. So I have to check those pins. The ones for communication on the diagnostics are in pins 14 and 15. If I follow six, uh, sorry, 14 and 15, if I follow 16 and 16, which is can high two, uh, let me just see because it's a little hard to read. I will have to follow the lines and then look at the connectors uh, for, again, the diagnostics. We use CAN1, as you can see here. So for master and slate connector, that's in case he has a second engine, then you use CAN2. But for the boat interface, as we can see here, it's still using CAN1 positive and negative. So this is his interface, the one he's not being able to use. And OVD and diagnostics are in the same. So this is how I follow the diagrams. And I notice that, yes, indeed, um, we have a problem with the CAN bus. All right, so I'm going to open the computer and see what I found. And we go from there. Hey guys, I, I opened the computer as you can see right now here. I'm trying to, you know, see if in this design is a newer computer. The CAN transceiver was located in a better spot than the original one. And no, it's exactly the same layout. So I have a computer that I have used as a guinea pig so I can locate and do my own schematics, locate components and so on. So this is as you can see, pretty much I have removed some components to get under uh, like the microprocessor, that one right here, uh, the big one right there in the middle of the of the board. Uh, let me just point right here. And then fiber regulator to file, uh, you know, find all the pins in underneath. But yeah, so the layout is close. I mean, it has some minor differences and we can see, you know, locations of capacitors and so. But the EEPROM and the um, um, CAM transceiver, even though this is uh, the one on the left, it's an older computer, the CAM transceiver was there uh, already installed for future productions. And if you read the manuals, they explain all that. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, we can see the crystal oscillator located almost in the same place, but set, you know, set differently. But yeah, look at, at the board with my microscope, like kind of like in this position, I can see the EEPROM right here and the CAN transceiver kind of like under the connector, which makes it impossible impossible to, to replace. This will be too intrus intrusive of a repair that can end up damaging the board and um, it makes it really hard to uh, make it feasible uh, repair wise cost wise for the customer in this case i think his best choice will be to go to um, either analog um, gauges uh, the problem will be when something gets a misfire or a fold they will not be able to scan the computer and then he's going to have to take the decision of order a computer Again, cost-wise, it's, 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 it's just too much. Uh, the board will be completely need to be removed. I will have to completely desolder as I did with other, this other one. The problem when this is happening is just so much uh, heat that you need to apply to the connector in order to desolder all the pins. You have these goo clear uh, material, which is, you know, a reinsertable, um, gel but that makes it very hard to work with these modules and yes i do have the gel and that would not be a problem by removing the entire board it is remove the entire connected areas it's just it's not um it's, it's like i said again money wise will be too much for him i want to show you i got the um screen um 
with what a transceiver is so we can see what a can transceiver will do and i'm going to check uh, make sure the pins two because this one has a mark on pin one <coughs> i'm sorry i can see pin seven and six that's kind of high and kind of low and we're going to check those with the microscope so let me get the microscope going on so we can see that on the screen microscope okay perfect locate that into the position that i need it so that's kind of like right there and we're going to go down a little more all right so what i want you to see here is this is the eprom this is the can transceivers and this is pins 14 and 15. look at his computer again here i'm going to try to locate it as close as to the light possible so we got pin one there and pin 15 here so 14 and 15 if we go back to the manual <clears throat> just now i still have open uh, right here so pin we're looking for pin 14 and 15 can high and can low and we can see again this spins out shows it as reverse because i have the computer facing the other way but yes so pin 14 and 15 again this is the microprocessor if I have put this computer the same way where the microprocessor is, so pin one is here, pin 15 in here, so obviously pin 14 right before that one. Okay, so I am in the correct pins. What I want you to see as I'm going to try to get this as close as or stick it in there, that, that works. Make sure my yeah, continuity beeping is working. So, um, we have coming in here this goes this way onto these or through these resistors uh, onto this right here so we have pin 14 this is pin 14 so let me see what pin 14 is on the uh, manual again for so pin 14 is scan high all right so if i go over to uh the data sheet that i have opened too yes pin 7 is can high all right so we got can high again so pin 14 is on this pin right here second pin hopefully you guys can see that in here but i am touching in there so that's the first pin the second pin and then the third pin should be can low which has been 15 here so the third pin it is indeed can low so that is matching perfectly. Uh, on the other side, we have, uh, so we now know pins set six and seven are okay. I can see both the references. Uh, obviously that board is not connected, but let's check the ground. Uh, if the ground is in the same position, so we can, uh, let me see how, I know I have a ground in here. So let me put an alligator clip one second. All right, so I got, this is one of the main grounds, and uh, again, pin 14 and, 15, 14 and 15, they go through this capacitor. This is just a filter capacitor, and we have a ground on the other side, right? So, and on this side, so there's a, a good ground. So we're looking for pin two. We have a dot in here. I'm gonna show you this in, in a second in the microscope, but so pin one, pin two should be a ground, and it is. So yes, what I've been doing, and so we can see that in there i'm going to just now focus onto the screen here so we're touching the ground so this is our ground path in here right so this is ground and then the other side of this capacitor is ground pin 14 and pin 15 right so we can see the traces going under here and they indeed they have a uh, connection to that and then again pin one uh, show with a dot and then pin two on the other side which is the ground that i just touched in here is right there and we have the ground so perfectly ground on that so that matches our um, transceiver data sheet that we have here right so everything is pointed in the in the correct direction and that is the transceiver i then follow and this is how i do it on on here 
I then follow a little more. Let me just move this a little here. Um, so mm, let me see if I can, let me get up a Mona one second. All right, I put up a Mona alligator clip. Those are nice clips because they don't short out. And right now we are here. So we can see that I have now continuity. Uh, when I touch in here, you see continuity every time. I'm not sure how much the microphone will pick, but uh, we'll pick up the beep. But uh, yeah, I can hear the beep really good. So let's go back to the microscope. I'm going to try to uh, focus into the area so you guys can see what I'm doing. And this is the way that I also do my testing. So uh, I'm going to now, since I have that one in there, I was untangling my leads. All right, so we got now there. Uh, then the next thing that I notice is following the path. Sorry, following the path in here. I should have put the screen recording, but uh, sometimes a little much for what I need to do. And you follow, and I found it. They come over to uh, this resistor here. So you see, now I have communication into that one. So that is a direct path. This resistor will come this way, and then the other one, which is this is TX. Again, if I go over to the um, data sheet, uh, come on. It's a little hard to do with the left hand. So we are in the TXD. We're going to go over to the RXD to find the other signal. So I'm going to move the Pomona adapter. I'm going to focus into the screen so you guys hopefully can see that. What I'm, I'm about to do is just grab with that. You see how that looks like a, a very nice and good um, connection. All right, so I got now in the RXD. TX and RX, remember, those are the communication lines, and I know what I'm going. I'm sorry, guys, this is trying to do too many things at the same time, so I'm going to touch in here, and we can see that I have now the RXD on that one. So, yes, as you can see, I have my power of the computer. If I follow these now, um, I cannot do this with uh, this the way the um, the screen or not the screen, the design of the board is, but I'm just going to point so you can follow. So uh, this right here, so this is where the RXD is, right? So we are here. That will go into this one kilo ohm resistor, and then it will follow the pad all the way here, and then it's into the microprocessor. You see right here. So this will be the same pin, again, going down under the microprocessor, and then onto this one kilo ohm resistor. And then, yes, this is how I design the schematics. There is no schematics for these computers inside. So, yes, I take, I buy a component, a board, and I know that it's working good. I first then record all my signals with my oscilloscope to make sure what the known good signals should be with on every single component. I take the curve tracer with the computer disconnected, and I mapped out the entire computer then i remove components and i start looking for those not every single component but i'm going to go over to injectors coils fuel point relay main power relay fiber reference fiber reference regulators and i mapped out to where they go what circuitry is involved in between them crystal oscillators to the microprocessor. Those are common fit to fail. Um, and those are very important because that's the clock, right? So, uh, but yes, that's a little more in depth of what do I want to share. But yeah, this is how I do it. Uh, you want to see an schematic, that's an schematic. I mean, you can see all the lines in here and then the next component I just designed, you know, and I put this, you know, the way this a symbol is for a resistor. I put it a one kilo ohm resistor and so on. Uh, so, yes, this is how I do it. Um, things that I also want to share on um, Diacom, you can find this very good information. Uh, these are uh, manuals for the 4G computers. I'm going to go a little fast in here so I can share a little bit and this is the newest ma uh, 
manual. I'm going to show you where you can locate that. Let's say you're working on an 8.1 throttle actuator and control arm. This has everything for the testing. It tells you the pinouts, colors, and not just only that, it gives you waveforms. This is, again, the internals on the computer. You can see how the analog to digital converter takes that signal from the throttle position and has to uh, pull up resistor right here through a pull out resistor. It doesn't tell you the value, but it tells you that you got a firmware reference through a pull up resistor, so it protects the firmware reference. And then this, this voltmeter right here that you see right there is just the analog to digital converter inside the computer that takes that analog signal voltage right and converts it into an a square wave signal that's zeros and ones how the computer will analyze that data right but yeah there's a lot of good information in here and the next thing that i wanted to show you is this this is a waveform now we have waveforms i can see what under acceleration the total position should do if i follow this a little more uh, again, that's the throttle position. I can go a little further. Now we're talking about the control arm, uh, right? The control position uh, mechanism, TCP signals on this 8.1 liters. Not that his is an 8.1, but I am trying to share this because, yes, if we go further, now we have another waveform. Closed throttle, wide open throttle, and what the signals should look as you are doing acceleration the IPS, so this is very good information. If I go at the end of this manual, now we also have, and you can see this is picoscope. So they're, they're really giving you information, really, really good information on this manual. You can have the cam and crank correlation signals. You wanna know if your cam and crank are in sync, and that's why the boat is not starting. Now you have it. So 5.7. 5.0, I think uh, the 270 is like a 5.0, so it might it most likely will use this same cam and crank correlation. It tells you um, another signals in here. Let me just keep going. Uh, we have a, uh, an amp uh, clamp on the ignition primary, and then voltage on blue. Again, all this is picoscope. Same things in here. This is primary, secondary, or primary current, sorry. And then you have the secondary and the blue one up in the tab. This is a lot, a lot of good information. We got an injector voltage and injector amperage. Wow, this is this is great. I mean, now you can compare. This is why is the signal looking like this? Because it has a, a, a center dial, so it's clamping that spike so it doesn't burn the computer. And they're doing that on the newest. Uh, systems do try to protect the computer. It also recommends you to use a 20 to 1 attenuator. It depends on the oscilloscope that you're using. But yeah, there is even the knock sensor signals in here. Wow. I mean, fuel pump amperage during uh, low pressure and high pressure. I mean, yeah. Where did I get that manual? Okay, so as soon as you open Diacom, uh, this is laptop base. Buy yourself the laptop base diagram because otherwise you're not going to get this. So even the computer cannot be connected. I got nothing connected to my simulator or anything. All you need to go is right here. That is op open service manual. You have pretty much everything for Volvo. I couldn't find a wire diagram for the 270, so I'm ordering the print copy because I want always to, to have it. But yes, you got everything in here. You see right here, it says EGC 0607 Diagnostic Book, uh, EGC 20, 2015 Diagnostic Book. This is it right there. So open this manual. I list it as, uh, if I go over to, let me just make sure I'm in exactly correct. EGC Field Injection Operation and Diagnostic. So that's not the same. Uh, let me just close all the rest uh, that I'm not... So we can, so this is a manual that you're looking for, EGC field injection operation and diagnostics. So let's go back to here, right? So well, let's open the manuals again. And then it's 2012, you see, hmm. EGC parameter descriptions, no. What's the name of the manual? EGC fuel injection operation and diagnostic 2011 non-catalyst engine. 
So why am I not able to find it now? <laughs> well, because, you know, they put so many different names in here. So let me just see sensor circuit operation and testing. I bet you this is the one. Well, this is also a very good one because this is advanced electrical diagnostics. So download this 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 uh this uh manual. This is a gear a very good one. Let me just um this explains more about three wires, two wire sensors, pull up pull up resistors. I mean this is this is a deep and di in depth diagnostics. So please download it talks about the AD converter, analog digital converter, pull up voltage pull up you can have pull up or pull down so this is a very good one let's go back in here because i want to show you that one um they don't name it the same so let me see energy agc parameter description we already went to that uh agc let me see if it's this one no right let me go over to the next page no that's not let me see the um yeah that's page one how can I not find that one now? Diagnostics. I just click on that one, right? Wiring. So we got wirings in here. Ocean, UVC student reference. So maybe this, maybe it's this one? UVC system operation. No, is that that one? And now I'm going all over the place. I'm not going to remember which ones I opened. So just bear with me. I mean, I think this is very important for you. You see operation. This is the one. So it's the first one. See, this is this is the same one. You see operation. They, they name it differently. It's fuel injection operation and diagnostics 11 to 12. So we can see that that is the same manual. You want to have that manual. So again, open that. Bobo Penta. Click. And this, the first one, EGC system operation. You got all these manuals in here. You got for MEFI 3, MEFI 4, EGC controls, and then additional publications that you want to download all this. Uh, it's right now for free, so use it. I, what I do is I download every single manual that you have here, and I save it for uh, in my computer. You never know when they got removed, and then you cannot access it no more. But yeah, so this is how you get to understand your systems better. I mean, like I said, there is a lot, a lot of good information in here. You want to know about the Ocean X module wiring? It is here. This is so important. So this is all for Volvo, right? So make sure that you download and understand how this works. They even give you the signal. I mean, now we are talking about like, you know, diagnostic patterns, uh, weight that you can compare to what you got in the boat. All right. All right, guys. Uh, I think this is going to be another, another long video. Uh, David, I'm going to contact you and uh, give you the news. I will not recommend to repair this. Uh, it will be probably more expensive for me to try to repair this computer than what it will cost to get a new one. And uh, yeah, I would understand when it's not available and I will try my best for a computer that is not available and help uh, a customer because then, you know, you otherwise will have to get a different harness or try to see what you can put in that boat that's different. But this is a 2015. This should be available to, to purchase. All right, guys. Thank you so much for visiting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And as we say in Costa Rica, this is a nice sign in there. Pura Vida. See you next time. Bye-bye.